You're listening to Nurture Your Zest. I'm your host, Ashley King, and I will introduce you to a wealth of interesting, fascinating individuals from all walks of life who will share their stories, how they've overcome challenges, and you will find out their top tips for success. Through this podcast, you can gain tips to grow and change your life and the way you see the world and help you to nurture your zest. Hello, thank you for joining me today. My name is Ashley and I'm delighted to have Herb Kim in the studio with me today. I'll pass over to Herb now to introduce himself. Thanks, Ashley. Uh, So my name is Herb Kim. I'm best known uh, as the founder of the Thinky Digital Conference, uh, also TEDx Newcastle, TEDx Manchester, TEDx Liverpool. Uh, I'm also currently the visiting professor of enterprise, the David Goldman visiting professor of enterprise and innovation at Newcastle University Business School. That's amazing. What a reel of uh, titles there. And thank you so much for coming on today, Herb. Um, I'm really interested in, in asking you about all of those elements that you've just mentioned. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, when they when they hear your voice, will, might notice straight away your accent. Yeah. So can you tell us a bit more about your, your journey? How did you come to be in Newcastle, of all places? Sure. Uh, well, my parents are Korean, mm-hmm. uh, and they uh, moved to New York in the early 60s. And uh, uh, I was born in uh, 1967 in Brooklyn. And I grew up in basically the New York City area between New York and then eventually New Jersey, uh, suburban New Jersey. Uh, and I w- you know, went to university in New Jersey. I did my business school degree in Philadelphia. And... Um, while I was um, in business school, I did a semester at London Business School, and while I was there, uh, I met a woman, and we kind of hit it off, and then we started dating. I m- went back to New York, and she stayed in London. She was working for what's now PwC, the accounting firm, or the accounting and consultancy firm, and uh, I went to work for IBM, and um, through, again, an, another series of happy accidents, um, a, a company called Blackwells, uh, based in Oxford, England, uh, was looking to set up an internet bookshop, and they, they got in touch with me to ask me if I knew anyone that might be interested in helping them. This is back in 1996, 97, so this was a while ago, and very few people at that point had you know internet experience. And I was working for the internet division in IBM in New York, and I just said, well, you know, actually, my personal circumstances mean that I'd actually be pretty curious. Maybe there is a fit here. And so there was, and I came over to Oxford uh, in June of 1997. And, uh, yeah, I've been in the U.K. ever since. Uh, I spent a couple years in Oxford, four years in London, uh, and then a whole other long story. I ended up in Newcastle to set up uh, an economic development company to kind of uh, hothouse the sort of the digital and tech industries of the northeast of England, which I started moved in. I like to joke I landed on Geordie Shores in 2002, and I've been working here ever since. Um, and uh, in in uh, this was now for a bunch of personal reasons, I've been splitting my time between Liverpool and Newcastle, uh, and and. I came in 2002 to set up, eventually set up a company called Codeworks, and one of the projects of Codeworks was to do a conference that became known as the Thinky Digital Conference, which first launched in 2008. And, you know, our timing was very good in the sense that, uh, you know, the the tech industries, the digital industries in the North were just really beginning to, you know, uh, take hold. If you you think back to 2008, uh, that was the year that the iPhone launched. And, you know, that, of course, unlocked this massive explosion of, 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 of tech wealth and, and curiosity and, and whatnot and, and innovation, of course. And it really kind of helped, helped fuel the rise of, of conferences like Thinking Digital. Uh, in 2009, the TED launched the TEDx program, and, and I volunteered to uh, actually launch five TEDxs. Um, today, I'm only involved in, in, in three. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, in 2012, the old company that I had come up here to create uh, called Codeworks, well, we shut that down because it, it was funded um, primarily by the government. And with uh, all the changes in, in the government at the time, 
we we had to we had to shut that down and I, so I, I i sold my house in liverpool and i bought thinking digital from codeworks so it could set it up as an independent company that was 2012 and lo and behold, uh, seven years later, I haven't managed to bankrupt the firm, and uh, we, uh, you know, we seem to be doing okay. And uh, that kind of brings us up to, I guess, 2019. Uh, hopefully, that wasn't too long-winded a version of my story. Not at all. That's really interesting and actually fascinating to see how much you've been in different cities in the UK. So coming mm-hmm. coming to new shores and actually trying out various places before ending up between Liverpool and Newcastle Mm -hmm. and I do hope that you have had what Newcastle is known for as a really wonderful welcome um, and and really friendly um, as the Geordies are known to be it's I am actually from South Africa myself originally so Mm -hmm. I have to say when I first came to the UK I was delighted to be in Newcastle it's such a warm and friendly place um Although I did find it really cold and I find that really funny because actually it was July and the height of summer when I arrived. So did you find uh, much, much different between um, being from New York and New Jersey Mm -hmm. to coming to the UK? Were there cultural differences that took a while to get used to? Um, How did you find that transition? So, uh, well, when I first came to the UK, I moved to, to Oxford and so there was, of course, still a weather adjustment, even though obviously, uh, obviously Oxford is further south from, from where we are right now. Uh, there was definitely a cultural adjustment, even though, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, there's an expression about how the U.S. and the U.K. are two countries separated by the same language or some words to that effect in the sense that while they appear to be very similar, they're actually in subtle ways very different. Uh, and uh until you get used to that and and you know it's 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 tough you know and so you know places like oxford and 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 london and the south generally um you know they're less overtly friendly places than 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 i would find gen- as a general rule in the us and so you know and of course there's a there's a certain amount of sarcasm that you've got to figure out when they're being sarcastic and all that kind of stuff. Right. You know? And, uh, so, so yeah, so definitely there was an adjustment. Um, and it was interesting cause I mean, when I got recruited to move to Newcastle, I was basically, you know, on the fence at that point about moving back to America, back to New York or, or you know, someplace like that for a variety of reasons. And, um, you know, and then I, you know, obviously decided to pursue this uh, opportunity in Newcastle, and now uh, split my time between Liverpool and Newcastle, as well as Manchester and and, and other points of the north. And you know, people ask me all the time, and uh, you know, this is basically, why are you here? You know, so I'm trying to get to America. I can't believe you actually voluntarily voluntarily came to to. And and I, for me, uh, what keeps me uh, in the north is, you know, it is, it really is. You know, it, I mean, you've mentioned great people, and uh, you know, I think it's the quality of life is great. You know, the culture is American-like to me in the sense of the kind of general friendliness and openness. Uh, you know that 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 I have found uh, living in this part of the world, and um, you know, I guess I, along with you know others, have 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 predicted that you know tech and digital and creative industries you know would become uh very important parts of the northern economy and it's been great to see that happen as well in parallel and so i've had a number of things that's sort of kept me here and you know and uh, the other positive thing is that i appreciate america a lot more actually living in england uh than i did when i was there and uh but i i kind of feel like i have you know, in a sense, the best of both worlds right now, where I'm, you know, very much enjoy where I live. Uh, but you know, I go back at least twice a year, uh, and I always enjoy going back as well. I think it's so important to stay curious and broaden your world view, and travel's a really important way to do that. And um, although you've traveled a lot around the UK and you've lived here, do you find that with your TEDx involvement or all of the, the work you're doing in the tech industry that as well as the States, do you end up traveling quite a lot around the world? Uh, I So I tr- I have traveled a fair amount. I'm not I'm definitely not the most traveled, but um, I'll be honest. I mean, uh, you know, I can 
Uh, so, so my my physical house is on the Wirral near Liverpool, and my office is is over here. You know, I can be in a in a in a hotel in in Stratford, London, and and that can be different enough that uh, it just takes me out of my normal context and helps to. Um, you know, I guess see things just slightly differently enough to make them either discover things I hadn't seen or, you know, re- to see the same things in a different way. And then obviously, you know, if you go to Bangkok or if you go to San Francisco, if you go, you know, to Beijing, you, those are also obviously great opportunities to uh, take yourself out of the normal context and, and or as some might say out of your rut uh, and, and help to, you know, really provoke a, a different way of seeing things and thinking about things. I think that's a really good point because as uh, I'm sure you are a very busy individual to be able to take some space and review things and think about your perspective that must be really valuable to help you adapt and and change what you need to do Um, I guess to to give you more of a blue sky thinking with with whatever projects you're working on. Yeah. No, definitely. I mean, it it can also. I mean, you know, for the, I think the downside is if if you're a person of means, I think it also become, to some extent, just a distraction. You know, you could, you you know, you could effectively, you know, I guess when does travel become just pure leisure versus something that is something that really enriches one's life, if you will, right? You know, and so I suppose spending two weeks on a on a beach. Yeah, you know, I don't want to knock people who do that kind of thing. And I'm sure for some people that is an enriching way of 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 recreating. So, you know, the the you know the word recreation, right? It's recreation, right? So you you use that time to effectively recreate yourself and and your mojo uh, to to help you uh, hopefully achieve the things you want to achieve. And I think as well, a lot of young entrepreneurs are doing that, uh, traveling around the world and and working from hot desking shared facilities in Bali or wherever they may be. And it's quite interesting to see how how not just the world's changing, but actually the entrepreneurial space is changing a lot as well. Um, you also spoke about how there is a really strong tech scene and also creative arts and creative industries scene in Newcastle. Um, and, well, the North generally. And I think that is super exciting. I know that I'm really looking forward to seeing what emerging collaborations will come out. Connected to that, I'm wondering, so you, you mentioned that you're the David Goldman uh, lecturer at the moment, and that's a very esteemed position. How did you get involved um, with Newcastle University? So, I mean, I mean years prior to uh, the, the current uh, visiting professorship that I hold, uh, I, I've just, I mean, if you think about, uh, you know, especially with things like Thinking Digital and, 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 and TEDx Newcastle and other things like that, uh, they are events really about thought leadership, right? And so what is Newcastle University but a collection of people, some in some cases, who are literally thought leaders in their own fields uh, and, and others who are well, certainly learning from those thought leaders or de- developing into future thought leaders and, and such like. And so it's just an incredible collection of, of, of talent and it's a natural, it's, it's almost not, it's not surprising in any way that I would connect well with certain parts of that university community. And, um, you know, I think I guess I've I've just developed enough relationships and just uh, hopefully credibility within that community that when it came time to consider who might be uh, you know named or nominated to be this 2019 David Goldman visiting professor, uh, I guess my name came up, <laughs> and I was very honored to uh, to be asked. Out of curiosity, have you felt any different in the way people treat you or just your own personal experience um, being named a, a professor? Do you find uh, there, there is any different? Or Sure. I mean, you know, uh, obviously Newcastle University, it's a Russell Group University. It's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a very well-established research university in the UK with a global, you know, presence and reputation. So even for my friends in in the states, you know, it, it you know, they they know it's it means something to have been asked to name this thing. So which is which is nice. I mean, you know, it's which is which is great. Um, it's been great to get to know 
you know, people like Sharon at the business school and, 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 and Chris Day at the university and, and be able to, you know, converse and learn from, from people like that and work with them as well, you know? And so, uh, it's, it's been, you know, it's been genuinely a valuable, you know, really valuable experience and, um, you know, great, I'm, I'm great that I've still got some time left in my, my, in my role there. Absolutely. And out of interest, do you get to spend any time with the students? Have you had any interactions with students while, while being in that position? So I'm working with the university to help them basically to uh, facilitate some uh, student and company interactions between local digital companies and students looking to get experience about in those things. Uh, I've done a couple of lectures and things like that. And um, I'll probably, I'm sure I'll do a couple more. We're thinking about developing possibly one big headline event together and things like that. So yeah, we've got a number of different things, you know, that we're working on. That sounds great. Um, I wonder, having had such a, an interesting career and being involved in so many different things, I'm sure that you would be very inspiring to other people who are wanting to get ahead in tech or start a career in the tech industry. If you were to go back or if you were to advise a mentee or, or somebody now, what would your number one tip be for getting ahead in the tech industry? I think this is true for any industry. But, you know, uh, I mean, a lot of my current journey was started by reading uh, this book called Good to Great uh, by uh, Jim Collins, who is an ex-Stanford University Business School professor. And in it, he argues that the path from being merely good to great is is paved by, you know, understanding what it is that you're truly good at. What are you unusually great at doing, right? What are the, ultimately, what are your what are your skills, right? And and don't um, the unfortunate thing is people then tend to list fifty things that supposedly they're great at. Um, you know, it's got to be one or two or three things that you really you know uh, understanding what you're passionate about, or at least very interested in, uh, and then figuring out uh, you know how how you can kind of utilize both the the energy of that interest and passion combined with the competence of, of the things that you can sort of bring to the table, if you are right. And so, you know, uh, you know, for me, I think, I, mean, I think I would argue that all of secondary education, I've got a daughter in secondary education, you know, like, it's nice that they, you know, do things like religious studies and, I guess, a bit of history. I think, but I think beyond, you know, just beyond reading, writing, and arithmetic, right, you know, the basics of, of education, helping people understand what they're interested in and what they're good at is just and and the the more they know I'm whether it be I'm good at math or I'm really great with people I'm very extroverted and I'm like you know you know or uh, you know I'm, or I really enjoy researching I'm really good at you know s- sitting by a computer for eight hours a day in a dark room and just researching deeply into a topic right and just having and it's you know it's oftentimes it's helping people develop an understanding as specifically as possible what they're good at. And then so whether you want to be in tech or whether you want to go into sciences or sale or whatever it might be, having that kind of understanding about what you're good at, I think is just a, a massive, because tech is, I mean, people hear tech and they think coding, right? And it's like, I, it's, we're probably now at a point where the, the majority, the cl- a clear majority of the people involved in tech, do, either the, don't, they're not involved in coding at all, or they don't, and, and they don't know anything about coding, right? So they're in sales, they're in admin, they're in marketing, they're in you know project management. You know, there are just so many functions now in tech that have nothing to do with tech directly. Um, and so, uh, really understanding what it is that you are good at and what 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 you find interesting, I think is 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 the first place for anybody. Thank you. Um, we all know that things don't always go to plan in life. Um, are there any occasions where things maybe haven't worked out as you expected and you you had to actually struggle or work through something? And what would you say to people going through a tough time today? Okay. So here's the, uh, the irony for me is that I, you know, so I, you know, so I, I, I graduated from Princeton University for my undergrad. I got my MBA from the Wharton School of Business in Philadelphia, right? You know, and my, you know, and that, this is a path to 
basically what could be a relatively easy life of being in in sort of first world organizations being you know maybe not a billionaire but you know paid well and comfortably and all these sorts of things and i i was very happy to embrace the philosophy of i want an easy life right i don't want a stressful life i don't you know i I, I want to achieve things, but I'm not I'm not looking to land on the moon, if you know what I mean, right? And um, but inevitably along the way, you know, um, some big, big fat what felt like life threatening professional crises did arise, right? And I I did this talk a few years back where they asked me to look back on my career, and it was the first kind of talk I'd done that. And when I realized tracking through this point is that those those crises were actually any real significant personal professional development came basically off the back of these crises, right? And so I have, you know, at the end of that talk, I, I, I said something along the lines of, you know, if if you don't seek out challenges, challenges will come and seek you out, right? So it doesn't matter. The life's gonna life's gonna find a way to get you, right? So you might as well actually, and then understand that you know those challenges you know, are, and the more real they are, right? And that's, it, there's a lot of people who say they've been through challenging things, but, well, you know, I, I don't know how challenging some of this sort of stuff is. I mean, that's really where all the great professional and personal development happens, you know? And and so for me now, it's like seeking that stuff out. And and the reality is that every, every step of success actually, and it's interesting because I've, I've spoken with lots of entrepreneurs and, and business owners and, and the ones who do make it, so that they always think like, oh, well, if we do this thing, like we get to a million in revenue, that'll be the promised land, right? And then they get there, right? And of course, it is it is nice for a while, right? But typically, success then just leads you to your next crisis, right? Something changes, which then, yeah, and and so that 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 is just something. If you have ambition, that 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 the 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 crisis is actually oftentimes after you've achieved what you believe is uh, is your next step of success so thank you that's that's really inspiring um i want to talk to you a little bit about tedx because i'm a huge ted fan mm-hmm. and i just want to ask you you did mention that you know you were asked to help get it going in in the uk and 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 in the north um, what is? Well, I wasn't asked. I did. I I, oh, right. I said I would. You know, I volunteered to do it. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. a lot of work goes into TEDx, um, and I know you you really have done such a great job for the local region, um, in in the northeast uh, of England. I just wondered, um, what is your favorite TED talk? Oh boy, <laughs> <laughs> there's so many, aren't there? <laughs> yeah, I mean there there are a ton. Um, there is a talk by Jill Bolte Taylor, who um, this is a, a, a neuroscientist who suffers a stroke, okay, and, and talks about as as a neuroscientist about the fact that she's having the stroke and the experience that she went through, and about this her ability to experience both to some extent uh, her left brain and her right brain operating separately, uh, and that that was. Uh, an utterly fascinating uh, talk that that I still find super inspiring and 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 and, and great to listen to. There's a talk by Dan Pink, um, who breaks down, you know, uh, uh, his some insights into what actually motivates people and gets them going. So those are a couple off the top of my head. There are a bunch of others uh, that there's one from a woman named I think it's Kelly McGonigal. Uh, it is Kelly McGonigal. Her sister actually has done a TED Talk as well. It's a very talented fan of Jane McGonigal. Uh, Jane's talks about games. Kelly's talk, she's a psychologist. And again, she actually talks about the value of stress in terms of achieving peak performance. That it's something to be, you know, it's something to be welcomed. You know, it's not, she's not glorifying stress, but she's not, she's saying that, that the idea that all stress is bad is wrong. I agree. I think stress can be about perspective. Um, for me, I find actually stress can be very energizing. So it's really interesting to hear what you've just said. Um, have you ever done a TED Talk? So I have done a TEDx Talk. Um, I did one actually in, was it Beer? Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, it was in South It was in South France. It actually took place near Beeritz. And I'm just, oh, 
TEDx Bass Country was the was the full title thing, and uh, so yeah, so I have done I have I have done one or two, yeah. Okay, and as someone so involved in TEDx in the north of England, uh, what would you say, given that you've got a conference coming up? I mean, we're really excited about it locally. Can mm-hmm. you tell us a little bit about your conference happening? Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's 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 going to be happening on the on Saturday, the fifth of October. Um, it'll be in the main hall of the Sage Gateshead, which, um, if you've not been to, is an absolutely gorgeous uh, venue. Uh, we have a great relationship with the staff there, and so we work really collaboratively with them. And we will have, you know, another great array of of, of fascinating speakers and performers. And uh, we're we're on track to have more than twelve hundred people attend. So it's become a you know like a I guess a big deal, uh, and it's uh, it's lovely to um, you know it's a g- genuinely a privilege to be able to to host and produce it. That sounds so exciting. I know that I myself will be one of the volunteers helping out that day at TEDx Newcastle, um, and I I know that the student population and the local communities of Newcastle are really excited about it. Um, so that sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, out of interest. You're so busy and you're involved in so many projects. Do you ever get tired? And if you do, how do you make sure you practice self-care and that you nurture your zest? So, uh, yeah, I mean, managing, I mean, this is true for pretty much everyone, but certainly most people. And um, it'll be honest, it's, it's constantly a balance, right? You know, and... Part of it is around um, obviously choosing well so that you don't say yes to everything. But on the flip side, you want to, you know, you want to say yes to perhaps more, you know, you you don't want to just basically say, be saying no to everything either. You, know, you get people who manage things that way. Um, certainly for me, I mean, you know, so uh, like uh, I, I would say there's, 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 there's been two things. Uh, well, there's more than two. So one, one is, you know, obviously taking care of yourself, right? You know, so, you know, I pay some attention to thing, you know, diet and certainly I have a pretty regular exercise habit, but I would say that my exercise habit is something that is built to be sustainable. It, it's meant to be a life habit, not something that, you know, as, as you know, people tend to yo-yo, they'll get really into it for six months to a year and then know, something happens and they kind of they you know things like that and so i've i've got what i believe to be a really sustainable exercise habit uh i think the other thing for me as well is you know when you when you go from uh when you go from this kind of very corporate lifestyle that i was kind of raised to live uh and then setting up your own company at some point and things like that and it's been a real redirection of under of energy where so when you live in that corporate life you know I, I like to joke about the fact that like effectively you know uh you know if you if you were if you were the C, if ceo of google were to disappear tomorrow right Google would just march on, right? <laughs> it would still continue to generate billions in profits, and you know, and 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 to some extent, you know, the, the, there is a game that's already been set up at Google. It has lots of throw weight, and, and and you know, and so, and and you you will just step into that game and and get to play it or not, right? Uh, whereas when you're the entrepreneur, when you try to do Everything depends on you actually being the one to set up the rules of the game, get people involved, and you know, and it's, so it's a it's a very different kind of energy that's involved. One that's basically one's extrinsic, where you 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 know you go to so you go to university or you go to school, you get good grades, you get hopefully you get into a good university that'll get you a good first job. Maybe you'll go to graduate school that'll get you a better job, right? And all along the way, it's kind of like you just kind of jumping through hoops. To then get a bigger prize, right? Uh, whereas when you set up a company, you know, or an organization or whatever, you know, there there is, a, you know, it's all down to you, and and, and so that energy's got to come from from you inside versus something that you're responding to, and so that's been that's been a really big lesson for me, and in, in, in a redirection of 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 
to some extent, what motivates me. Excellent. Thank you. If there, if there is one thing that you could say to people in one word, what would it be if you were wanting to inspire the next generation listening? <laughs> one, I only get one word? Only one word. Curiosity. And uh, well, we were just talking about this before in in, uh, in the other room, and it's it's uh, so f- for me, you know, it's it's a it's a fundamental driver for what keeps me going. And that's what I mean. For we talked about Ted already. I mean, that's Ted reconnected with me with my. I kind of lost a lot of my curiosity, and it made me reconnect with that and. And realize how important it was to my energy and my you know, motivations, my, mo- my my mojo, as I've mentioned before. And um, it's so it's also a dangerous thing as well because you know, especially in the commercial world, oftentimes people don't want you to be curious; they just want you to take orders and shut up, more or less, right? And and of course, sometimes you should. You need to, to play ball and play play with the team, but you know, you need to make sure that that you you don't. Well, at least for people like me, you, you you stay connected with your curiosity. Thank you, Herb. Given that you've been so helpful telling us about TEDx and we're all really excited for the conference coming up on the 5th of October, can you um, tell us a bit more detail about the giveaway that you'd like to do? Yeah, sure. So uh, we're uh, very happy to um, donate a couple of free passes uh, for uh, interested lis- listeners just simply uh, email us on info at tedxnewcastle.com. That's info at tedxnewcastle.com. Um, uh, and if you include in the subject the hashtag, why don't you read the hashtag? <laughs> the hashtag is nurture your zest. Okay. Yep. So hashtag nurture your zest in the subject and just include, uh, obviously, well, we'll have your email address if you're emailing us in, but uh, the, the names... Uh, emails of the interested uh, uh, two people uh, as well as any social links whether it be Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn and uh, we will um, go ahead and and I guess run that for this is going to come out on the 23rd did you say? Yeah. So if we ran it for five days so close it on the 28th I don't know what that is but yeah (laughs) let's just say the 28th of September. Sure so we'll agree um We'll agree the uh, attendees on the 28th of September. Mm-hmm. Great. Thank you so much, Herb. That sounds awesome. Um, I know I'm going to be there and I look forward to seeing the um, the ticket winners there also. Definitely, yeah. Good Th- stuff. Thank you. Um, so can you tell our listeners how they can find you? Where will they go online to, to find Herb Kim? Sure. Uh, on, on Twitter, I'm just at Herb Kim, H-E-R-B-K-I-M. Uh, if you search Herb Kim on LinkedIn, I tend to be the one of the very few that pop up, and uh, I'm you know I'm Facebook as well, but uh, Twitter is probably the, the 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 easiest way to get me direct or LinkedIn. Excellent, and we'll make sure that any links to Herb are also in the description of this podcast. Thank you very much for tuning in today. It's been an absolute delight to chat to you, Herb, and we really appreciate you joining us. Thank you, Ashley. You've been listening to Nurture Your Zest. You can find us online on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn at Nurture Your Zest. If you've liked today, please subscribe. You can also leave us a review if you're feeling extra kind. Today's podcast has been made available through the kind sponsorship of TL Multimedia and That Branding Company. We look forward to catching up with you again soon as you learn to nurture your zest. Thank you.